Hey guys, welcome. Uh, this is Mr. Munyon here with the 2013 released practice geometry test for STAR. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right in on question one. Segment CD has an endpoint at 2, negative 1 and a midpoint at 8, 3. Which measure is closest to the length of CD? So this is an interesting question because uh, it gives us a segment endpoint and a midpoint, but asks us the length of the whole segment, not knowing the other endpoint. So let's draw a quick little picture, make sure we know what we have here. Uh, let's say that we have a endpoint C. You know the coordinates c is at 2 negative 1 and then there's a midpoint doesn't give us a name let's just call it m is that 8 3 and then the same distance would get us to the total endpoint uh, let's just call it d because uh, that's the segment tells us there and I know that if M is the midpoint those two would be the same so I should be able to find the distance here and because it's the distance to the midpoint uh, just multiply it by 2 to be able to figure out the total distance and I have a distance formula that I can use for these two points so once I figure out this distance then I'll just multiply it by 2 to get the total distance all right so distance formula from your formula chart, it says square root of x2 minus x1 squared, or just the change in x, however much the x values change squared, plus however much the y values change squared. So I look at my x values, they change by 6 units, from 2 to 8 is 6. And I look at my y value from negative 1 to positive 3 is 4 units. So I end up getting square root of 36 plus 16, or square root of 52, and that's approximately 7.2. So that's not uh, the answer, and that's not one of the answer choices. That's only the distance from C to D, so that's 7.2. The other half, uh, since it was divided into two seconds by the, uh, segments by the midpoint, is also 7.2. So add those together or multiply by 2, and we get the total des uh, distance for CD equals 14.4. All right, moving on to uh, question 2. It says we have an isosceles trapezoid, JKLM, shown below. Uh, we see we have a couple of base measurements. One of the legs is 17, so it's isosceles. The other leg is 17 units. Gives us one of the degree measurements here. Because it's an isosceles trapezoid, we should be able to figure out this other base angle is going to be congruent. And because it's a trapezoid in between the bases, there should be supplementary legs. So if we wanted to, we could figure out using the supplementary measures of trapezoid angles that would be 60 and the other base angle would be 60 down there as well but let's see what the question is asking if the dimensions of this trapezoid are multiplied by a scale factor of f to create a trapezoid j prime k prime l prime m prime which statement is true so the new trapezoid uh, j prime through m prime contains uh, two base angles each measuring 30 degrees no so we know that when we do a dilation uh, by some scale factor it's going to create if it's applied to all the dimensions it's going to create the same shape but a different size so it'll create similar figures and in similar figures the lengths of the side will be multiplied by a scale factor the angles though would remain the same so there are no measures of any angles that are 30 on the original fixture uh, figure and when you do a dilation uh, none of the angles are going to change all right so it's not f G, uh, the longer base of trapezoid JKLM is going to be 56F. Uh, okay, well that one makes sense because if you do a dilation by scale factor of F, you apply it all, all the sides. So whatever F is, you're going to take each of these and multiply by F to get your new sides. So each one of these. So the uh, longer base should be 56F. Pretty sure that's my answer there. Uh, H, the base uh, bases of trapezoids have length of 22 and 39. I don't know where they got those from because we don't know what the scale factor is. Um, not exactly sure where that came from. Um, trapezoid J prime, K prime, L prime, M uh, contain two base angles measuring 120F. 
No, definitely not. Because when you do this dilation, the angles don't change. So you're not going to multiply the angles by a scale factor. Definitely not this one. So this one, we don't know where the answer came from. Looks like it's definitely going to be answer choice G. For question three, which pair of triangles has enough uh, given information to prove that triangles are congruent. So hopefully you remember that there were five ways for proving congruency and two that don't work. The two that didn't work were donkeys and batteries or angle side side and triple A batteries. All the rest of the combinations do work for proving congruency in terms of angle and side combinations. So we have side, 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 angle, side, angle, side angle um, do, 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 angle angle side and R H L which stands for right hypotenuse leg okay so from here uh, we would need to check and see like hey I think like maybe this one I've got angle side side but it has to be the same information in the same order on both triangles so both B and C don't even have the same information in the same order this one has angle side angle where there's an included side in between the two angles this one the side is not included so not the same information in the same order same thing here the angle is included in between two sides and the angle is not included in between the two given sides so it's not even the same information on both triangles on a there's not enough information you need at least three pieces these both only have two and although this looks like a right angle it's not indicated so we can't put that on there so this one would be none of these have the exact information in the uh, right order on both triangles okay question four uh, here it says in the diagram below the angle of depression from P to Q is 45 degrees luckily they have a diagram that's drawn and labeled for us already uh, which of the following is the closest to the distance between P and Q? So it looks like uh, we could probably do uh, some trigonometry here to solve this one. And we're trying to find this distance between P and Q here. So we're trying to solve for this side. Notice uh, we do have a right triangle given with a right angle here and a side of 32. We actually don't know any of the... Um, angles given inside the triangle but we could very easily figure this out so uh, a couple different ways you could do this you could use complementary angles here because uh, if this is like the water down here uh, the top of the cliff would be parallel to that you could use parallel um, lines cut by transversal to get this is 45 or if you know this is right angle this has to be right angle up here and you could use complementary angles to get this is 45 uh, either way once you know one of them you can solve for the other one if you wanted to uh, so we have a right triangle now with one of the acute angles known and one of the sides we could do trigonometry from here uh, or you could actually do special right triangles uh, since these are 45 degree angles on here so let's start with trig first, just in case it wasn't. You could do those with any acute angle measures. Let's say we want to use um, sine, cosine, or tangent. So let's pick an angle and then figure out which information we can use to solve for this side. So from that angle, I know the opposite side, and I'd be searching for the hypotenuse. That would be the sine ratio. Remember, so Toa tells you which trig ratios use which sides of the triangle. So I know the sine of an angle is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse sine of 45 degrees equals 32 over eh, let's just call it h still for now if you want to solve for h you can do two steps of algebra or we learn there's also a shortcut where whenever you're solving for a denominator you can just switch it with the other side equation that actually involves multiplying both sides by h so the h cancels out but it does end up on the other side multiplying by h and then dividing both sides by sine of 45 so it ends up in the denominator so we get h equals 32 over sine of 45 degrees so let's plug that in a calculator and see what we get so 32 over sine of 45. And make sure the calculator is in degree mode. And looks like we end up getting 45.25 uh, as our answer for this one. So the hypotenuse should be about 45.25, which rounds up to 45. Point three. Another way to do this one uh, using special right triangles would be to 
Given this is a 45 degree angle, this would be a 45, 45, 90 isosceles right triangle. If this is 32, uh, we could do actually Pythagorean theorem, 32 plus squared plus 32 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Or you could label your sides in terms of x. Um, for these special right triangles, this would just be x square root of 2. So if you plug in 32 root 2, you'd also get this answer as well, 32 times the square root of 2. For number five, it says the rectangular pyramid shown below was intersected by a plane parallel to the base. So we see that we have uh, the base A, B, C, D, and there is a plane intersecting that creates the cross section A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. It's parallel to the base. Based on this information, which statement cannot be proved to be true? Uh, okay, whenever uh, you do have a, a pyramid or cone and you do a cross section parallel to the base, it is going to create a similar figure. So I know that this first one here is true. Uh, you know, if you think about no matter what shape the base is, if they're all going to a point up there, it will create a similar figure. For question B, uh, we could look at the uh, ratios of corresponding parts here on each of these shapes. So uh, A F would be this whole piece here over AF. Those are corresponding pieces of each similar pyramid. So that's a ratio of corresponding sides. I could compare BF to, uh, whoops, BF to B prime F. And that's the same ratio of corresponding parts. The whole edge of a pyramid compared to the whole edge of a similar pyramid should be equal to the whole edge of a pyramid compared to the similar edge excuse me, a corresponding edge of a similar pyramid. So this one's also true. Uh, if I look at angle A, A prime, D prime, so A, A prime, D prime, is that going to be congruent to uh, angle B, B prime, A prime? Uh, Hmm, that one's kind of interesting. I'm not 100% sure if that one's true, but let's look at this one. Angle B, C, D, so B, C, D is here. Uh, it did say it was a rectangular um, pyramid, so I do know rectangles have all right angles. All of these should be right angles on there. Okay, so then BCD should be a right angle. And B prime, C prime, D prime, so that should be a similar figure, so it should be a smaller rectangle. That should be the same for sure. So that one's definitely true. The only one I wasn't sure about, it's got to be that one. And uh, basically, I just don't know what those angles are on there. So it's the only answer that's left. All right, number six. Five spheres are being painted for a display at a store. If the diameter of each sphere is seven centimeters, uh, which value is closest to the total of the surface area that will be painted? So we've got five spheres. Each has a diameter of seven centimeters. We're trying to find the total surface area. So we're going to have, uh, we need to find the surface area of five spheres. Okay, so surface area is going to equal surface area of five spheres. And the formula for surface area of a sphere is four pi r square. We can get that from the formula chart. All right, so let's just plug in what the radius is. If the diameter is seven centimeters on my sphere, that means that the entire way across is going to be seven. Uh, the radius then would be half of that 3.5 so if I was to look at the radius I just cut the diameter in half to get the radius is 3.5 so I can plug in a 3.5 there and then just type this in my calculator and see what we get so closest to the total looks like we're just gonna have to round to whichever one is the of these is closest so 5 4 pi 3.5 squared So it looks like uh, 769.69, or rounding up to 770, should be our answer for this one. So answer choice F.
All right, for number seven, it says on the map below, uh, Main Street, 10th Street, and Highway 1 intersect to form a right triangle. Uh, the distance between 10th Street and Main Street along Highway 1, so the distance between 10th Street and Main Street along Highway 1 right here, so the distance between these two streets along the highway, is 5.6 miles. So this is 5.6 miles. Which measure is the closest to the length of Main Street from Highway 1 to 10th? So what's the length of Main Street from here to here? This looks like straightforward trigonometry. I've got a right angle here. I've got one of my acute angles. I know a side. I can solve for the length of Main Street between Highway 1 and 10th Street. I can solve for that. So I'm actually going to call it H here for the hypotenuse. So um, I have... A right triangle with an angle of 40 degrees. This would be the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. I can definitely use sine to solve this one. So sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 40 degrees is going to equal 5.6 over hypotenuse. Just like the other problem, we can switch with the uh, other side of the equation. These two things, when you do two steps of algebra, just give you h equals 5.6 over sine of 40 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug that in our calculator, 5.6 over sine of 40. So 5.6 over sine of 40. It looks like we get about 8.71 miles should be our answer for this one. So about 8.71 miles. Number 8. For triangle ABC and DEF, angle A is congruent to D, B is congruent to E, based on this information, which statement is a reasonable conclusion? So it sounds like uh, we have two triangles and that have congruent angles. So uh, two congruent angles. We actually know that uh, angle angle similarity proves that we already know these triangles have to be similar to each other. So if I was to draw these two triangles, I don't know how big they are, but um, they're going to be similar to each other by angle angle. They have two pairs of Congruent angles, they have to be similar. So A, uh, B, C has to be similar to triangle uh, D, E, F because A is congruent to D and B is congruent to E. And so then the last ones would have to be congruent as well. Uh, C would have to be congruent to F. All right. It doesn't tell us any information about the sides, so I know for sure I, I can't prove that uh, any of the sides are congruent, so I don't know anything about the sides. Let's look at the angles here. Uh, angle C is congruent to angle D because they are corresponding angles on congruent triangles. Well, I don't know that the triangles are congruent because it doesn't tell me anything about the sides. So far, all I had was angle-angle similarity. Uh, so pretty sure it's not that one. They Angle C and F are congruent because they are corresponding angles with similar triangles. Definitely. Angle-angle similarity does help us uh, prove that the last angle has to be congruent as well. All right. For number nine, uh, looks like, whoops. Uh, here we have line ZX and line WY are secants of circle V. So a secant, remember, is a line that um, intersects a circle at two points. Based on the information, which of the following can be proven true? So this one is just about uh, angle relationships on circles. Uh, hopefully you learned that you can identify the angle relationships on circles uh, by based on the where the vertex of the angles are that you're looking for. So here um, we have a couple of arcs given. We have arc XY and we have arc um, WZ and they are intersected by the central, not the central angles, the angles here uh, at U where the vertex is inside of the circle. Hopefully you learn that uh, you can identify if you have a central angle, the arc and the central angle are exactly the same. If you have a vertex inside the circle, then those angles are going to equal one half of the sum 
of the two intercepted arcs, which is the, what we have right here. We have a vertex inside. This angle is going to equal one half of the sum. If the vertex is on, oops, the angle just equals one half of the one intercepted arc. And if it's outside, so if you had something like this over here, you had an angle where the vertex was outside, the angle would equal one half of the difference of the two arcs. You'd have to subtract the big arc minus the small arc uh, and then divide by two to get that angle. So on ours, I know that these angles here, uh, the vertex is inside of the circle, so it's going to be one half of the sum of those two. So let's see what it has here. Measure of angle Z, U, Y is equal to Z, V, Y. So uh, Z, U, Y is equal to Z, V, Y. No, that's definitely not the same. This angle is going to be a little bit bigger than that one. So that's not true. Measure of arc W, X equals 180 minus... Uh, WZ, not true, because uh, this line doesn't go through the center of the circle and cut it in half. It goes somewhere else. So if you're any, not anywhere in the center, the arc that you're going to get is not going to be 180 degrees if it doesn't go through the center. So that one's not true. Uh, here, this looks like um, we have the sum of two arcs. Yeah, the measure of angle X, U, Y. So X, U, Y, that is our angle that we identified earlier, is equal to one half of the sum of arc wz and xy so that is exactly what we ended up having right there so this one is true the last one would be if the vertex was outside of the circle we need to find the difference between those two intercepted arcs so um yeah this one would be if you had a vertex like way out here and it went through those points that's how you could find that angle all right um moving on to the next problem Number 10 says uh, segment PQ is shown on the coordinate grid below. The coordinates of P and Q are integers. Point XY lies on the perpendicular bisector of uh, PQ, segment PQ. What is the value of X? So there's a point somewhere on the perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular bisector is exactly what it sounds like. We need a segment that is perpendicular to and bisects. So bisects means it goes through the midpoint. I need to find the midpoint. You can just, since this is a horizontal line, you could just average the x values. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 5 divided by 2, so at negative 2.5, that looks like it's right. If you wanted to use the midpoint formula, you could on this one. Um, and you'd get also negative uh, 2.52 would be your midpoint on there. But now that I know where the midpoint is, I need a perpendicular to make it a perpendicular bisector. So the point already bisects it. Uh, obviously perpendicular to a horizontal line is going to be a vertical line, so not my best work, but I know there's a vertical line at x equals negative 2.5. So that means any coordinate on that line is going to have an x value of negative 2.5 and then whatever the y value is it doesn't matter because the x value is negative 2.5 so the value of x would be negative 2.5 all right let's stop here and i'll continue 11 through 20 on the next video